Um, Dave, so lots of COVID-19 news in the wrestling world, which we were kind of wondering about uh, a week ago when we, when we did this show. How come, I, I, I think I straight up asked you, like, how come this isn't affecting wrestling when it's affecting the NBA and the NFL so poorly? And a week <laughs> later, we get our answer. Yeah, it's everywhere. Um, yeah, um, and WWE changed its policies, and it's a lot of stuff going down. But um, a lot, yeah. Um, so, so the as far as like the shows, like last night, sh- the Mon- the the Sunday shows, um, where a lot of the talent wasn't on. Um, it, it they were due to covid protocol you know why they weren't on but there are people who did not test positive that they the basic gist is they want to protect the two main events although kevin owens was on raw tonight but then he was at the garden last night but the idea is is that they want to protect the main events so none of the main eventers except for kevin owens are for for the for the day one show are going to be at the house show so they were all pulled um i think that that they should have announced that that they were pulling it especially since they made that call several days ago um but they didn't and and um they actually like they they opened the the garden show and the orlando uh, tampa show the tampa show on on sunday night and they did say that there are people missing but they didn't say who and then they shot big angles and at the beginning, you know, one for it, one with Edge and Kevin Owens for the garden. And then one with um, Drew McIntyre, Sheamus and the Usos for Tampa. And tonight in Orlando, they did the same thing. But the Usos did say Roman Reigns isn't here because in Tampa, people expected Roman Reigns in the last match. And then when he wasn't, um, you know, it. it it wasn't like it was bad, bad, but there were definitely people unhappy, um, you know. So, um, so they announced. So they did announce that at the show at the beginning of the show tonight, and then there were other people who were missing tonight on Raw. Um, so yeah, it's uh, you know it's going through right now. The idea is is that everyone has to do a five-day quarantine, not a 10, because that's new CDC recommendations. And they then have to test positive or test negative twice on consecutive days, which means it's essentially it's six days between when you first test positive and you can wrestle again. So everyone is expecting expected to be at the pay-per-view as far as we know which would mean that they knew by saturday um you know as far as like some of the guys and i mean it was interesting because it was reported last week that the house shows were kind of in you know not that they were in jeopardy of being canceled although toronto toronto for um what was toronto was wednesday night um, that was canceled. Um, no reason given, just moved to March. I think that that's a, the problem was that, you know, with the limited capacity, um, too much of a hassle, you know, it's like, um, fish had like four sold out concerts at the garden mm-hmm. and they canceled it last Thursday because they were afraid that limitations would be put on. And move them to April with the idea that, um, you know, they had however many tickets sold that if they were, you know, it was all full house, legitimate full house. And so the idea was that if they made restrictions like 15 percent or something like that, then it would be an absolute disaster. And so to get ahead of the game, they canceled the concerts, including a big New New Year's Eve concert. Um, So um, they kind of you know, whatever got ahead of the game. So with WWE, I, you know, I, I think that played a part in that. Maybe they also didn't want to risk going across the border and then back on the border. Although they did go to Detroit and Detroit's a whole lot worse than Ontario when it comes to uh, COVID of late. That uh, did look like that building was good sized crowd too. They had the best advance of the week. I know it was over 
the last time I saw it was over 7,500. So they were probably, you know, at 8,500 to 9,000, which is, yeah, the best, the best number they're going to have all week. Uh, most likely I'm actually for sure, for sure. It's the best number because nothing else is close to that. I mean, the closest was on, was Toronto and that's off. What about the pay-per-view? Pay-per-view will, will do well. Yeah. Yeah. Pay-per-view. Um, um, That'll be, that'll be that'll be over ten thousand. Um, they had a real good. Ever since they did the, um, so ever since they they announced the um, Reigns and Lesnar match, tickets moved pretty well. They went from, I'm going to say, you know, sixty five hundred to almost ten thousand in two weeks or three weeks actually, actually three weeks. Um, so they did they did pretty well. Um, that's the most. That anyone's ever moved tickets for this, this. This is this is actually the hottest match WWE's had in, um, you know, as far as moving that many tickets that late into the game, you know, um, since they came back. I mean, there've been shows where they got off to big starts, but they never moved that many tickets that late in the game. So, so it's the biggest, um, you know, ticket seller this late in the game, so to speak, that they've had. So it's, uh, so yeah, that match is big. Did you see SmackDown? You know what? I was going to watch it this morning, and I had a bunch of stuff to do, and I totally forgot until I started watching Raw, and I realized I didn't watch SmackDown. Yeah. I mean, it's nothing. The only thing really big on SmackDown, I mean, the the, the main event was, um, you know, Usos and, and Mad Cat Moss against McIntyre and um, The New Day, and... Um, you know, it was one of those, the big thing is, you know, pouring the eggnog on each other, on, on the heels heads, on Corbin and Moss. And, you know, that was like, you know, the big ha-ha. So, you know, but the, the 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 only thing, they opened the show with the Paul Heyman interview, which was tremendous, absolutely tremendous. Um, and, you know, he kind of did the thing of, you know, like he, he essentially, without saying he's retiring, he sort of said, I think this is it. Of course, it's not. But he was talking about how, you know, yeah, I could go to NXT and find one of the young guys and hook myself up with him. But at this stage of my life, I don't think I'm going to do it. So it was kind of like, you know, he was, you know, saying he's retired, although obviously he's going to have something to do with the storyline of Saturday because I was essentially told that it was very, very important for WrestleMania that that uh, Roman Reigns does not miss this show, that Lesnar does not miss this show, and that Heyman does not miss this show. His name was mentioned to me in that in that uh, context, you know. So obviously, there's something big going on there. Wow. Um, so the folks in, in your update today, you wrote all the people who were not on the house show, um, and then. If you look at who was missing from Raw tonight, uh, we have a pretty big list for Raw. Big E, Seth, Becky Lynch, Bianca, Queen, Zelina, Bobby Lashley, Liv, Rhea Ripley, and Omos were all... And Do Drop as well was not there, although she may not have been booked on the show um, but because she doesn't have a pay-per-view match. But the rest of them, for the most part, have... Um, pay-per-view matches um and seth confirmed that he got right, COVID 19 he, right he's the only one you know they don't they do not encourage you to do that but i guess um he's a big enough star that he can say that without any repercussions and what behooved him to say it you have to ask him i i don't know but he just you know yeah he he's he's got it they did show him on tape i don't know like as far as like of those people like who would or wouldn't but anyone who's missing omas worked the garden and rhea ripley worked the garden but they were not on and they were obviously omas and um aj were supposed to have a match now the garden match with aj and omas i was i was told was absolutely horrible um so it is possible they just decided at the last minute that like you know why put a horrible match on tv so um Maybe that's it, or maybe it's COVID. I don't know, but they, you know, I mean, it was it was a weird it was a weird thing the way they handled it because they announced the match at the start of the show, and then all of a sudden, late in the show, you know, AJ goes, "Come on out, you know, let's do the match," and he's not there, and you know, Apollo Cruz and Commander Aziz come out, so that was really weird and awkward to say the least. Um, 
So yeah, so that's the those are those are a lot of the names. SmackDown you know. side, you mentioned Roman, uh, Nakamura, and Woods as well. Right. Um, I would presume since Woods and Kingston are in the same match that it would either be both or neither. So um, I would, you know, something's up with Woods, obviously, for not being on the show. And Nakamura, I would say the same thing. Something, something's up. Boogs, you know, because Boogs was on the shows. No, he was not on tonight's show. He was on last night's show. But tonight's show went really long. So it's possible that they just decide to, you know, cancel the Corbin Boogs match because they had so much going on on, on, you know, tonight's house show. So who knows? But, you know, when when everything's the secret, it's it's kind of hard um, to decipher everything. But, uh, yeah, that's and then, the situation. And then executives, no Vince on the show tonight. No Vince at the show, no Bruce Pritchard. Bruce Pritchard, there's there's an issue with Bruce Pritchard. Um, not exactly clear. I just heard a health issue, and he's been sick. Actually, um, I, he was sick a couple of weeks ago, and, and he's been – He's missed other shows, I believe. Um, you know, Vince, Vince, Kevin Dunn, uh, Michael Hayes wasn't at the show. Um, I'm trying to think who else was not at the show. I think those were the main people that were not at the show tonight. But I think those are precautionary measures because, again, for the same reason that mm. they don't want them. Miss- the the pay per view is supposed to be a big deal, you know, like, um, you know, again, something big for. 2022 and they want to get the show this the idea is is this is going to become one of their major shows of the year the january 1st or if if it falls on a bad night january 2nd um you know uh show is you know they want to make a new tradition out of this so to make a new tradition you gotta you know you can't come in with the first show and have your main events not there i still don't understand how they're going to be able to continue to call this day one and it's not going to be january 1st well, I mean, most weeks it will. I think there's going to be some weeks where, you know, January 1st is on a Monday or a Friday. And obviously those weeks, yeah, um, you're going to have to come up with something else. So back to the report that uh, WWE isn't doing the mandatory testing. We don't know if that has anything to do with vaccination status, right? It, it probably does. Um but I'm, you know, um, I saw I saw a memo today, and it it what I saw was not clear. Past, um, they strongly encouraged everyone to get a booster. I mean, that was in the memo um, that that just came out, and they announced the changes as far as you know. Instead of if you are if you are um, if you are not fully vaccinated and you test positive, it's a ten day quarantine. But if you are fully vaccinated, it's you know the five. It's basically the six day thing. So that's kind of the the deal that that they're going. That's a new protocol that they're going on, and that's based on new CDC recommendations. And to a degree, to a degree, copying how the NFL does it, I guess. Yeah, so um, what is I mean I, I probably should ask Dr. Patel but I'm I'm trying to We actually should. I'm trying to understand the mentality in both situations. So if the idea is if you are vaccinated and you don't have any symptoms, we are not going to force the tests like we did. But if you they 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 they, they the idea is is they know everyone's going to get no okay so also with if you have any symptoms at all, you know, you have to tell the doctor right away. Course, yeah, and these are, these are guys who lie about their injuries all the time. I'm, I mean, I'm specifically yeah. talking about, like, football players. Football, well, well, and wrestlers, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, football players even more. Yeah, yeah. And so people could have, be a positive, be completely asymptomatic, and be vaccinated – not get tested and then still spread it. So that's the piece that I'm having a hard time wrapping my mind around. Well, they're trying to claim that if you're asymptomatic, you don't spread. Now there is a, um, this is in the NFL thing. So I don't know if it's WWE, 
but there is like I guess a way in the test that you can if you're at a certain level on the test then they know that you're not spreading it you're not an mm. active spreader and that's the that's the NFL thing is that you have to you know you have to have that right you know you know so in theory there you're not spreading it but man people are getting this thing left and right for something that's not spreading you know what i mean i was listening to a news report today and they were specifically talking about some of the major cities that were really affected and, and they, they kind of just threw this number out. They, they, they didn't throw this out as like a scientific fact, but they were saying that one person mentioned to them that they would not be surprised if one in every 20 people uh, possibly had the, uh, the, the Omicron and didn't know it. And I was just like, "Wow, that's such a giant number." It was in like you know, one, giant. one yeah, of these that's, that's one of these major cities that were getting really killed. What, Detroit, D- like New York, yeah, Chicago, Detroit, or I heard also San Francisco is getting beat up pretty well too. Really, and, yeah. and and San Francisco, San Francisco is one of those vaccinated cities in the country. Yeah, so yeah, it's kind of scary. Um, so yeah, the, well, the, the, well, well the, the 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 thing that's not as scary is that. It doesn't seem to be as bad, although, I mean, my my sister-in-law has it and, and, you know, it's not like it went away in a day and it's not like it was like the cold, like everyone's saying, oh, it's just like the cold. Yeah. I mean, it's she's pretty sick. I mean, not like not hospitalization sick, but but she's been run down. She's been run down for a week. Yeah, I also heard some numbers now. Again, this is just uh, one of the reports that I was listening to said it is about 10 to 20 percent less uh, when it comes to hospitalizations and severe illness. So that's good, well, I know but that. it's not nearly as much as it sounded like they were hoping that it was going to be. Yeah, well, Dr. Patel did say that as far as like the ICU ward, that it's that everyone in it that he's seen were people who were unvaccinated. Right. right. So that's, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I guess like the idea is, is that like, you know, you're you're conceding that this thing is going to be there. Um, and that everyone's going to get it or that many, many people are going to get it. But the goal is to keep people from getting really, really sick. And I, you know, at the end of the day, um, if, if everyone, you know, if, if there's no long-term effects, but you know, we just, I don't know. There's a lot, there's a lot of, there's a lot, there's a lot of questions. I mean, it, sure. it is, it is a hard thing, right? Because originally, we were all just really, really trying to avoid getting sick. Like, think back to the early days and the lengths that we were going before the vaccine to right. to not really even connect with people. Like, I, I went to your house and, like, we literally wore masks <laughs> on apart. and we're six feet apart. Yeah. And, and that was the extent of our of our meeting. Um, but then and you we, know, when we, we probably met, what, twice in a year, right? Yeah. And then maybe three times or something like it was very few times. And then thanks to the vaccinations, we were a little bit more comfortable. Um, and, and so to actually for, for some people, if they get positive, you know, it's probably really frustrating just because of the idea like, oh, gosh, we've been doing so many things to stay out of harm's way. But at the same time, there's the other side of uh, the, the the ledger there where people are just like there's just such a good chance that you're probably going to catch it at some time, no matter, you know, no matter matter what what you do. And that's hard to swallow, right? Because our mentality is like, no, we're not going to get it. We're going to do whatever we can to not get it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Well, I mean, I don't know what people know. I mean, I've watched the news and had people say that like, this thing is all going to be gone in March, but (laughs) you know, I mean, and, and you know, I, I've heard that for, for, you know, a year and a half now. There was so, a there was a Facebook post that Crystal and I posted last Christmas, and and, and I read it back to her because it was a little one year anniversary thing, and it said you know because we were wearing masks on Christmas morning, and it, it, it the the post said something to the effect of hopefully we don't have to wear these next year, and I looked at her and I was like, we're wearing them, <laughs> we're wearing these things for we're wearing them for, for a, a while. Long time. <laughs> <laughs> for a long time. Yeah, yeah. I can't go shopping without them. I mean, you know, they don't let you in the stores. So, yeah. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. 
the 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.